In this video, I'm going to explain binary search, how it works, and then we'll take a look at the code for binary search using a for loop and then using recursion. Basically, the purpose of binary search is for you to determine if something exists in an array or not. And the precondition is that this array must be sorted in order for us to perform the binary search. Let's try searching for number 40 using binary search. This function will call a different function here. So binary search two, and it basically adds in two more parameters. So zero and length a minus one. The first step is to pretend that there are two people who are going to help us with binary search. So we have a person named left and right, right? So left is number zero, it corresponds to number zero and right corresponds to length a minus one, which is the last index in the array. So left is gonna go right here and then right is gonna go right there. Now we ask ourselves, is the left smaller or equal to the right? And the answer is yes, because left is at index zero and right is at index four. So the left is smaller than the right. The next step is to calculate the middle. All you have to do is use this formula. So the mid is equal to the left, which is at zero. So zero plus R minus L. So that would be four minus zero divided by two, and then you have these brackets, which means you round down. So this is equal to zero plus four divided by two, which is to round it down, which gives you two. So this means that mid is at index two. So all we have to do is put mid right there. Step number three. Now we have the if, else, if, and else. So there are three case scenarios. But let's take a look at the first one. Here we have the array at mid. So looking at mid right here, in the array, we have number four. And is number four equal to the target that we're looking for? The target that we're looking for is number 40. No, it's not, four is not 40. So we move on to the next if statement right here. Is number four less than the target? Yes, because four is less than 40. L is equal to mid plus one, which means we just put the L to the right of mid then we no longer need the mid, so we also delete the mid. And now we repeat this process. So going back here, is L less than or equal to R? Yes, it is. So we calculate the mid. The mid would be equal to L, which is three, plus we have R minus L. So four minus three divided by two. So we have three plus one over two, and when you divide one by two, you get 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 rounded down is zero. So at the end of the day, you're just going to get three. We're going to put the mid at index three. After we calculate the mid, there are three case scenario, and we're going to get one of these cases. The first one, it says in the array at mid, so it would be number 10. Is 10 equal to 40? No, it's not. So we move on to the next one is 10 less than 40. Yes, it is less than 40. So what do we do? We put L to the right of mid. And then we no longer need the mid, so we also erase the mid. And then we repeat this process. So we're here again. Is the left smaller or equal to the right? Yes, it is. So we have to calculate the mid. The mid is equal to L and L is at four. So we have four plus we have this bracket and then R minus L. So that would be four minus four divided by two. So you know this thing is gonna be zero and therefore mid is going to be at index four. And we have the three case scenarios and we're going to get one of them. Now the first one, the array at mid, which means this number right here, 40. Is 40 equal to the target, which is 40? Yes, it is. So all we have to do is return mid. So this function will return the mid, and mid is at number 4. So there we go. We found number 40 at index 4, and this completes the binary search. Let's do another example, and this time we want a binary search for number 5 in this array. The first step that it's going to do is it's going to determine L and R. So you guess it, L is gonna be at the beginning and R is gonna be at the end of the array. And then we are right here. So is the left smaller or equal to the right? Yes, it is. So let's calculate the mid. The mid 
is going to be L, which is 0, plus we have this bracket, and R minus L. So 4 minus 0 divided by 2. So this will give us 0 plus 2, which is 2. And then we put the mid right here. Now we have three case scenarios. Looking at the array at mid, so right here we have number 4. Is 4 equal to the target, which is 5? No, it's not. So we move on to the next if statement. Is 4 less than 5? Yes, it is. So we move left to the right of mid. And we no longer need mid. So we are back to here. Now, is the left smaller or equal to the right? Yes, it is. So we calculate the mid. The mid is going to be L, which is 3, plus we have this bracket, and R minus L, so 4 minus 3 divided by 2. And after you calculate this, you're going to get 3 plus 1 over 2, which is just 3. So we put the mid right here. Then we have the three case scenarios. The first one, A at mid, so looking at this number right here, which is number 10, is 10 equal to 5? No, it is not. So we go to the second case. Is number 10 smaller than 5? No, it is not. So we move on to the third case, the else one. And this here means that 10 is larger than 5. We move R to the left of mid. We also no longer need the mid. And we are back to the top. Now, is the left smaller or equal to the right? Looking at here, no, it is not. So if it is not, we just return minus 1, meaning that 5 is not inside this array. This binary search here will result in minus 1. And this completes the binary search. Let's do one last example, then we'll move on to the code. So we want to binary search the number negative 1 in here. So looking at this array, we know that negative 1 is not inside this array. But how does the search occur? The first step is to place L and R. L is indeed smaller or equal to R. So we calculate the mid. The mid is 0 plus 4 minus 0 divided by 2. And this would be 0 plus 4 divided by 2. And you guessed it, it would just be 2. So the mid would go right here. There are three case scenarios. So looking at the first one, A at mid. So at this number, 4, is 4 equal to negative 1? No, it is not. So going to the second if, is 4 less than negative 1? No, it is not. So this means 4 is larger than negative 1. And here, we move the right to the left of mid. And we also no longer need the mid. We are back to the very top. So is the left smaller or equal to the right? Yes, it is. Now we calculate the mid. So mid is equal to 0 plus 1 minus 0 divided by 2. So this would be 1 over 2. And so this would be 0. Now there are three case scenarios. Looking at the first one, in the array at mid, which is number 2 right here, is 2 equal to negative 1? No, it is not. So we move on to the second one. Is 2 less than negative 1? No, it is not. So we reach here, and we basically move R to the left of mid. And we also no longer need the mid. Finally, we are at the very top. Is the left smaller or equal to the right? No, it is not. So it means that negative 1 is not inside this array, and we must return negative 1, meaning that it's not inside the array. <laughs> and that completes the binary search. For practice, you can pause this video and try searching for the number 3 inside this array using binary search. Assuming that you are done, let's take a look at the code. So here is the code for the iterative binary search, and feel free to pause this video and copy it down. And let's go ahead and test it. So here in this array, we want to search for number 10 in this sorted array, and it should be at index 3. And as you can see, it produces the correct output. The important thing to note here is that the runtime of binary search is O log N, and you always pass in the sorted array into the binary search function. One last thing for today. Let's take a look at the recursive binary search, and it is very, very easy. So here we have binary search, I'm just going to write it as bs, and then we have this array, and we want to search for the element 10 in this array. 
This function will call binary search number two, and it's going to add the two parameters. So this function calls binary search number two. It's going to add in the same list. And then it's going to add in L, which is zero. Then the R, which is length A minus one. So the length of this array is five and then five minus one, which is four. And four is going to be the last index. And then we have the target, which is 10. At the moment, the left is right here, and then the right is over here. The base case says, if the left is greater than the right, then we return minus one. But in this case, L is less than R. So we don't do anything here, we just calculate the mid. So the mid is equal to the left, which is at index zero, plus we have four minus zero over two. And as you know before, this is going to give you two. So at index two, we have the mid. Then we have the three case scenarios. So looking at the array at the mid, so in the array at mid, it would be number four. Is four equal to the target, which is 10? No, it's not. Now, how about this one? Is four larger than 10? No, it's not. So we are here and basically it's going to call binary search two. So let's see. So this will call binary search two. And this time it's going to add in the same list. So two, three, four, 10 and 40. And because 4 is less than 10, what do we do in this case? Well, if you remember from before, we take L and we move it to the right of mid. So that's what we're doing here. L gets moved to the right of mid and R stays the same. The mid is 2, so L would be 3. Then the R stays the same, then 10 stays the same. L is at 3, so L would be right here. And then R is 4, so R is right here. And is L larger than R? No, it's not. So in this case, L is still less than R, right? So that's why we calculate the mid. So mid is equal to three plus four minus three over two. And as we know before, this is going to be equal to three. So the mid would be right here. We are very close to finishing. We're gonna have the three case scenario and looking in the array at mid. So that would be number 10 right here. Is 10 the same as the target, which is 10? Yes, it is, which means that we found our target. And all we have to do is return the mid, which is return number three. So this function right here, this entire function will return number three. And then going up the recursion tree, this returns three. And at the very top, the result will be three. And that completes the binary search. Let's take a look at the code. But just right before we do that, let's say if we want to search for number five, once you go through this tree, you will get to this if statement where L is larger than R, indicating that five is not in this array. And in that case, you just return negative one. And here is the code for the recursive binary search. And let's go ahead and test it. So we want to find the number 10 and it's at index three in this array. And as you can see, it produces the correct output. In the next video, I will show you how to code the Fibonacci sequence using a for loop and then using recursion. And there is a reason why this is so interesting. If you look at the first two numbers, we see that zero plus one gives us one, right? Now let's take a look at one and one. One and one gives us two and one and two plus together gives us three and two plus three gives us five. So this sequence is very special and I'm gonna show you how to code it. And that is basically it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and click like and also do not forget to subscribe so you can buy me coffee for free.